TG Geeks, episode 412, January 9th, 2023. Here we go again. Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery, sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane. We're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely Phoenix, Arizona, where it's warmed up a little bit, actually. Mm. Hey, you sound a lot better than from last week. Yes, much better. I don't. <laughs> and I've been right. Ha. ha. I, I can't do that. It, it hurts too much. And I'm Ben Raginton, um coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. As and, I cough off mic. Yeah, and, and yeah, thank you for that cue. Um, I've got a really horrible cough going on right now, so I will try desperately not to cough during the recording of this show. But or if I do... cough into the mic. Anyway. I will not cough into the mic. I will quickly spin around. <laughs> I've got a nice little blanket here that I'm going to cough right into. Put a cough drop in your mouth, and oh, God, here I've, we go. <laughs> I've been doing that all. I've been doing that every night now. My cheeks are raw. Okay, let's get on with this show. Prepare for hyperdrive. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. Well, it's just us chatting again this time. It may be a short episode like last week. Uh, also, we have had a few guests in waiting, but want to be sure that we are able to do justice to an interview. So please be patient while we recover from this cold that we have. It's mm. just more annoying than anything else. Just the coughing and the hacking. Mm. and the, Tell me about it. All the, all the schmutz in the throat and everything else. Then, because we do have a, a few things which actually we can chat about, uh, and just uh, you know, as I've said, we can talk about a a straw for twenty minutes, <laughs> and we'll find some way to make it interesting. Uh, hopefully, uh, have our regular birthday shout outs, our featured podcast of the week. We got some feedback, and then our regular shout outs. In the second segment, we got a couple of things to talk about, and then we'll have our wacky weekly recap and our regular. End of show shout outs that we do. So please stay with us. And here we go. Yeah, I used to use this as our uh, used it last birthday. time too, if I remember Birth right. No, I used the the fizz pop or the pop. You did? Yeah. I thought yeah. you used that one last week. No, I used something no. else. Anyway, the the other thing that we used to use for the birthday oh, segment, but okay. uh, this is what I'm using this week. So. Okay, very well. Anyway, so we are going to chit-chat. Uh, we There's a couple of things that kind of wound up in the last couple of weeks that we have uh, been watching. Uh, Prodigy, uh, Star Trek Prodigy has ended with its season finale. That was, well, for what? <laughs> I mean, 20 episodes, but each episode wow, was half yeah. the, basically half the length of a standard, ep, you know, like a Discovery right, or a Strange right. New World. So that's why they were able to give us 20 as opposed to 10. And to be honest, I actually liked it. Yeah, it was it was a good uh, it was a good series. I liked the characters. I liked the voices. I liked the I story. I liked the arc that they went through. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next season. I don't know if they've uh, already approved a next season. Oh, or they've, not. they've approved yeah. it, and they're they're in production now. Oh, are they good? Yeah, they are yeah. in production for it now, and uh, we're guaranteed some interesting surprises. Yeah, a, as it goes on. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a real good. Um, I, I liked it from the beginning. There were some things that were just kind of you know, kind of bugged me a little bit, but then I had to re realize that this is written for children. It really is written you for know, the You know, I mean, it was Cartoon Network, yeah. and it's written uh, Nickelodeon, for... Nickelodeon, I think. Or Nickelodeon, yes, Nickelodeon, sorry. Uh, what'd I say? 
You said Cartoon Network. I'm sorry, uh, Nickelodeon. And it it was written for a younger audience, and they didn't want to overwhelm with too much well, techno babble and too I, yeah, much I, I, I adult say, drama. I want to say I think this was written for families, right? Yeah, and, so and, was, and I think it was very well done too because um, after a time we became very emotionally invested in what we were watching. Oh, absolutely, in the characters themselves and and their arcs, you know, and absolutely, and, and what the characters did and accomplished and their foibles and their you know all the things that happened to them throughout this series or this season uh was a, an emotional roller coaster at times you know so and i was, think um, yeah and at the heart of it we've got kate mulgrew <laughs> whom yes. i absolutely adore she was wonderful uh, she was that that mother parent figure that um was kept them in line but mm -hmm. also allowed them the leniency to be themselves and do what they needed to do and, and what was necessary. And that was the holodeck Janeway. It will be interesting to see what um, Vice Admiral Janeway is going to be like yes, now. Exactly. You know, because it, they're two different people, uh, two yeah. different personality types. One was a, a holographic AI with a certain uh, set of parameters to work and, and develop from. Now we're going to have this Admiral, you know, she's, she's obviously grown. Uh, as a person since the end of Voyager. Yeah. And it will be interesting to see how she reacts to these, uh, well, to, to this new setting now. Yeah, and, and it it's interesting, and not, not to give anything away, but she is also um, familiar with time travel. So Oh, intimately. <laughs> intimately, yes. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where the next... Uh, season goes and what they do. I, I'm I'm excited. I am very excited <clears throat> and for see if it. they introduce any new new characters. And I I'm under the impression we're going to be well. I, I'm only basing this on some interviews that were held um, by I want to say Will Wheaton mm -hmm. for the Ready Room, and seemed to indicate that there were some really big surprises coming down the road, which. And I'm getting that based on the the two showrunners, the brothers, right. uh, the brothers Hageman, and I think they're going to be pulling out not only new characters but also maybe reintroducing some older. I'm going to say not necessarily older characters, but older ideas, yeah. older things that we've seen. So I'm very excited to see where this is going to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, sadly because this is an animated series. I mean, I, I, I'm under the impression that it takes a little bit longer to get these things put together. Right. Which is a bummer because I really liked the show. And, I, I know, and we're, we're kind of in, the, in a Star Trek void right now. And, and right. I'm like, I really need some new Star Trek in my life. Yeah, and it, it will be interesting to see if they uh, bring back Robert Beltran as Chakotay. I um, would Because hope that's so. the whole, that, that's kind of the whole point of going after... That, well, he the was, ship. He well, was the I mean, he not, was the mystery. Several, several. That was originally the the goal when they set out to look for the ship. When Admiral Janeway went to look for the ship, yes, is to look for Chakotay. And now that they it's they were come given to this, life, they've given, what, they were what's given happened? A, a really big clue towards the end of this final episode yeah. as to where to find him. Exactly. So, so I'm so. very excited to see where this is going to go, and I certainly hope that. Yeah, I would love to see Robert Beltran come back for this. Yeah. Well, it, we would also be interested in uh, hearing your thoughts on Prodigy. Um, yeah, what did you, you guys know? think about it? Yeah, exactly. Tell us tell us what you thought. Good, bad, indifferent? You I know, mean, did you of, did you stop watching? Did you continue on? Did you like it? All opinions it? You, are welcome. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we just always ask that you please play, play nice. nice. That's all. You know, if you didn't like it, just say, I didn't like it, you know. That's perfectly Don't, fine. No reason to bash anything or, yeah. or any, you know. I still stand on my soapbox that I hated the first season of Discovery, you know, and that's okay, <laughs> yeah, you know. Exactly. And then we uh, finished up with um, 
Slow the horses. second season of Slow Horses. Did, did, is it oh my, is it my, my imagination, or did that go a lot faster than the first season felt? I think it went a lot faster. This one felt really quick. Yeah. I mean, I think it because there was... The first season, we were being introduced to all the characters and had mm -hmm. uh, so much backstory that we had to, to learn about some of these people. But in the this, this second season... It was a, it was, there was an art, a plot arc for the whole season. Right. And it, it played and heightened and, and came to a head, you know, even into the last episode. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, we still haven't gotten, um, the backstory. Of, Not all of it. Yeah. But, uh, it's interesting to see where that might go. I, I think this was a series of five books that were written. So hopefully, yeah, you did some research on it. Yeah, I remember that. And, uh, and Slow Horses is like the the middle book or something. So I don't know. Well, we we got a trailer for <laughs> season three. Yeah, of Slow Horses, which I was impressed with because we didn't get a trailer for season two. Right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Apple TV was waiting to see how, how successful yeah. the sh show would be. Yeah. But we did get a trailer for season three. And uh, this one is very centered, very much centered on Gary Oldman's character of yeah. um, Lamb. Yep. So maybe we're going to get that backstory now. Yep. So, and, and I, I think I said in a previous episode or in conversation with you that one of our filmmaker friends uh, who is also a, a property uh, master or mistress mm -hmm. of, on some well-known shows, she said, I could watch Gary Oldman read the phone book. Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> he is. He, the man, he's he's another one of those he's actors. He's a chameleon. He, that's the word. <laughs> he is a chameleon because what you see in Lamb, I mean, not just obviously, you know, the things that he says, but how he says it. It's such a departure from anything else that I've ever seen him play. Yeah. He's, and it's amazing. He's definitely a character. I, that, one of my favorite I, actors just, today. He He's just... In this series, he is he's such an enigma. And, I mean, and a curmudgeon. Yeah, and you, you see him. He obviously lives in his office. He has no home for my He has no home. He eats at the same place, the same thing, the number eight. Yeah, the number eight. <laughs> Wears the same clothes day after day. Exactly. I don't think he has another change of clothes. And he's just, you know, you have to wonder... If that isn't some kind of deep cover for him, ooh, you know, I, I, I just, and he's so into it. I, I, I just, this series is worth watching. If you haven't watched the first series, we suggest that you. I, I would highly suggest, you know, not forcing you to, but I would suggest you go and look at the first series, see how you like it, and then continue on with the second series. It is absolutely fascinating. I wonder if it's available for home purchase. I mean, if, for people who have no wish to, or, or cannot um, subscribe to Apple TV Plus like we do, I wonder if it's, I wonder. Uh, you know, that would, that's worth investigation. We'll, to we'll see take if, a look at yeah, that and to see, see if there's, you know, like, like a, a we'll Blu-ray re release of season one or something. We will find out and report back to you <laughs> on the TG Geeks Newswire. Oh, is that what it's called now? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. You know. That's now the first segment. <laughs> yes. Whatever we're talking. TG Newswire. This is TG Geeks Newswire. You know, I got a sound for that somewhere. Oh, you do? Oh, that's awesome. We need to start using that now. I can't remember where it's at. Oh, you need to find that and get that ready anytime we got something like this going on. That'll be great. Okay. Oh, now now for the sad. For the sad. Something that was... I had high hopes for this. Extremely anticipated much anticipated had high hopes i liked the movie willow yeah did we make it through three episodes uh, i think we, we did yes. we did make it through three episodes i i and, cannot go any further i'm I, sorry I'm just i i'm extremely disappointed i'm not going to bash anybody i i just i think it it is suffering from too little story that's trying to be padded into a much longer 
series. And, and we've seen that happen in, I, I can't tell you how many cases is they have a, a story. What was that one? Uh, oh gosh, I, I don't remember what it was, but it, it should have, Oh, the, um, Oh, darn it, darn it, darn it. I, I well, anyway, it, it was, it should have been, you know, six episodes and they ran it out to eight or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, I remember what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of the series, because but the, I know what the you're talking about. the last two episodes were just like, what oh, it's, am it's, I watching? It, oh, shoot. We saw it on Netflix. Yeah. Was it that Sherlock Holmes series? No. No, no, no not that. Not I the regular. Anyway. But, but yeah, I it, know what you're it, talking about. And, and it happens a lot. You know, they get an order and they say, okay, you have to have this many episodes. And the writers say, oh, okay. But they only have enough for, you know, like they say you have to have six episodes and they only have enough material for four episodes. Mm -hmm. How do you pad it? And and that that's, I think, what Willow suffers from as well as... Uh, and I hate to say it, but there's some idiot plot moments. Oh, there's a lot of it in this movie, you know, or in this series. That just, it's like, really? Mm -hmm. Did you did you even think about that? Yeah. And, you know, some things, I you know, sometimes you can look beyond idiot plot, or you can look beyond those misgivings or those, you know, things that they do in a, in a plot line that are kind of more than MacGuffins, you know? Yeah. The other but, thing that, that bothers me is I, I, re, I, I dislike the way that they're characterizing uh, some of these players. I, I, I love Warwick Davis. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. I, I thought he was wonderful in the movie. Yeah. And that was my <clears> big draw, that, that he was coming back to do this series. And while I still like him... I'm not entirely on board with how he's being written yeah. as well as some of the other characters yeah, in here. Some of the er other characters are not likable characters at not, all. Not, I mean, they're, they're supposed not, to be, e not even remotely likable. And, and they're supposed to be on, uh, on our, you know, we're supposed to be rooting on for the them. On the good side, yeah. yeah. We're supposed to root for them, and, and you're giving me very little reason to root for them. Right. So we've tried. We would We would love to hear some feedback on this. What did you think, or what do you think? Of, has it finished yet? No. Oh, I don't know if it has. I don't. I, I don't think so. I think they made it on episode what six. What do you think about Willow? Tell us what we're missing. Is there something that we should watch another episode, or you know, I, I'm I'm unwilling to watch two more episodes to give it a chance. Maybe one more. I mean, we have a. Sometimes we have a three episode rule unless it's really, really well. Bad. I know and that it's one episode. Well, I, I know that when it came to watching the series Sense Eight, everybody said you have to get through episode five before it all comes together, and we did because I remember the first four episodes right. were just making me crazy <clears throat> because I I just didn't get what was going on. So maybe that's the case here now. I do know reading from a lot of news articles and on social media that the early response for Willow the series was very negative. A lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. So I really want to hear from people who did like it. Exactly. We don't Please. We don't want to, you know, well, it's not that we don't want to. If you have some misgivings about it or you didn't like it, that's fine too, but we would love to hear from those that do like it and what are we missing? Right. Absolutely. Uh, to give us an opportunity because, you know, I, I was, I was very much anticipating this and I was hoping beyond hope. I think mm. after I saw the trailer, even when I saw the trailer, I thought, Oh my God, what a mess you did. I, I remember did. you did say I, that. I said that. I said, oh, what a mess. Yeah, I was busy working, and you turned around, and you looked at me, and I said, and, and I said what? He said, oh, the trailer. I went, what about it? He says, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Now, another thing that we tried Hi. was the new National Treasure series. But we only <sighs> did two episodes so far. We have not done three. 
I, I don't know if I can do three <laughs> on this one. It just. It, well, we may it, have to. It, it's just two. It's just two. Well, <laughs> and the only reason I'm going to say we may need to is because I was. Wa- uh, Does Nick Cage show up? Oh, God. You know, we I, I, think, hope. I think we need Nick Cage <laughs> to save this. You know, for for all for for all the internet memes that Nicolas Cage is responsible I for, I think we actually need him to save this series. That's my opinion. A meme appearance. I know. God, we need it badly. But I, I was I was on Facebook and I saw a comment from a friend of ours, T. Morrison, who had gone got through episode three. Right. And he said he was hooked. Yeah, I I just it if it if it were just left to the main character, that would be great. But I think her so. three friends her friends are, are making me mad. Annoying. Oh my god, they're they driving are me mad. Annoying beyond belief. Yeah. I mean, she's the only one that has any brains. Oh yeah. And, and, the and other even are idiots. she's sus- suspect to, you know, uh well, having we have to keep reminding Stupid ourselves moments. these are young people. True, but my God, you know. But <laughs> even then, you know, this is something that I think a lot of writers this, don't. Fully is this get. fluff TV? Or well, <laughs> I, I understand how maybe a lot of writers want to present your young players in a more accurate light, but you've got to realize this is entertainment. Exactly. You know, um, this is not people, real life. People don't want to watch. They don't want to watch what they can walk out on the street and see. Yeah, I want. I, I need diversion. So, and I'm not saying you know teenagers being stupid. You know, no, you know, and, and I'm not saying I, I necessarily want teenagers to act like they're 40 year olds either. I don't want that either. There's yeah, got to be a certain amount of. There, there has to know. be a balance. You know, give them. It's okay for them to be a little bit reckless because you know they're you know teenagers think that they're you know 30 feet tall and bulletproof. It's okay to have that, but I just don't like seeing teenagers being stupid. Yeah, and that you know that's a, and that yeah, it, it just it paints the everybody in a bad light. I'm reminded of um, a Geico commercial where these teenagers are running from some sort of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre type killer, and they want to hide out in all the places that you know not to hide out in. You know, oh, let's hide out in that deserted cemetery. Oh, wait a minute. Let's hide out in that barn with all the shiny weapons in it. Yeah. Things like that. You know, that's stupid. Exactly. <laughs> and that's that's kind of what we have here in in some of this. You know, it's like one of the, the plot points. And I said, oh, my God, did you not even think about that? You know? <laughs> I'm trying to remember which one. There were so I, many. There were so many. Yeah. It was just unbelievable. But... Once again, if you like the show, if uh, we have to watch episode three to... I'm willing to go through episode three just yeah, to make sure. Uh, we would, we would uh, welcome your feedback. And of course, I have, to, I have to say, once again, and we've had this conversation, you look at the first two National Treasure movies, oh, as they're, adventurous they're, as they are, the plots are stupid. They are. They're really but idiotic. They're, but they are entertaining they're presented and, well and presented well yeah exactly and that's what we're not getting we're not getting a good yeah, presentation we're not here. getting a good re- uh, presentation of of what's going on here so anyway now we've been re-watching grim uh, again you know, a couple episodes at a time you bought the the big i bought a big uber yeah i, I you know we started to watch super it. genius model yeah. I started. We started to watch it on Amazon uh, Prime Video, and then I thought, you know, I, I don't. Know, who knows how long this is going to last? You know, and be available yeah. for free. So I decided <laughs> to go ahead and buy a Blu-ray set. So I. I oh, went, it's fancy packaging! Yeah, oh my it, god, it, the it's packaging is great. great. The packaging, and then for every DVD or Blu-ray disc. There's a page of a it from from a Grim book, a, a Grim book, and and, and it's, it's just, actually the illustrations are taken from the actual you know, grim uh, literature, the grimoires. <laughs> oh, that's very good. You know, the, the, the different grim books that Nick has in his trailer. Yeah. So, you know, the everything, everything that's in the book is accurate in, in, in this, in this case, yeah. this uh, for the, for the Blu-rays and the discs, because and, it is presented as a giant book. Every single leaflet is accurate. 
yeah, to the it, book. It's great, and there's what six episodes on a, a disc or something. Six, seven. Episodes? Um, it ranges from five to six. Yeah, so most it, of the time, it, it's. And of course, we were rewatching, and we were loving the series. Our third rewatch of this series. Oh yeah, it's like, wow. Just talk about a show that holds up. Exactly. the The complaint that I have is right in. I think there's what. We were, Four oh. seasons or something? Uh, I think there's five. I mean, I mean uh, six seasons or seven? I, I don't uh, know. I, don't rec- I, I think there's <clears throat> actually six, but I can't be anyway, sure. Uh, about in season four, I think. It was either season three or season four. Where the all of a sudden, the Blu-ray discs, it's as if they had run out of budget <laughs> and they gave the manufacturing of the and the insertion of the menus and subtitles to another company it almost feels like it changed it it completely changed everything changed when you get uh, with the first few discs i mean it's like any standard blu-ray or or dvd that you might have you know it's a you know play episode nice menu you know know, that that you look at it's beautiful you know, you even know, the menus are nice. Right, the menus look nice. But when and and the menu in terms of the graphics, you know, in the background and the music, there that's still there. But in instead of episodes, instead you have yeah. a little icon of a TV set. Yeah, it's like something that I would do. Or you instead <laughs> of um, extras, it's an asterisk. Yeah, and. And it's and, like, why are you doing this? And you know the the opening, the opening crawl, crawl that they have yeah, with that, with the that nice little font that yeah, describes the nice it. little font. It's supposed to be it's a from set, the Grimm, f- you know, from fairy tales or something. Supposedly, it's, yeah. It's like it's gone. If you, it, it, it's not there, and if you have the subtitles turned on, how is that possible? It's just weird. It doesn't show up, and then it it's just. That one bugs me uh, yeah. most of all. So it's I like, cannot figure I'm, that out. I'm 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 a little disappointed in NBC, you know, Universal. Yeah. That they produced something like this, and in the middle of the production of this, they would yeah this the, left turn. Like like I said, it it's like, oh my gosh, our our budget where we've almost expended our entire budget on the production of these. Blu-ray discs. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the idea that if you have closed captioning on, you know, Keith and I are in our 60s. You know, although today I sound like I'm in my 90s, but we're in our 60s. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Harriet. But we're in our 60s right now, so we like to have closed captioning on. And I think it's just bizarre that if I turn the closed captioning on, that opening little crawl that sets up the episode suddenly disappears. I would have thought that was burned into the actual imagery, you know, you know, all the scenes, you know, so that no matter what you did, it would be there. It was part of the print. Yeah. Well, apparently it's not. It turns <laughs> off now. I'm I'm just I'm gobsmacked by that. It's unbelievable. Totally. So anyway, that's our complaint about that. Um, Lastly. Now. I'll let you take this. The Eidolon. OK, so. What's that? So people, you, you know, if you if you've listened to us long enough, you've heard us completely crow about the works of uh, an author in North Carolina named Katie Edwards. He's been on our show a number of times now, and um, he's rapidly approaching um, the record for most number of visits on our show. <laughs> yes, and he's he, going to be Jeannie Koch yep, soon. He is the uh, he's the author of the Tara iconic sequence. Iconic author now. Yeah. Oh, he's <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> He has uh, already released um, three big novels that make up a nine-book series called The Tarot Sequence. Book, the as Last well Sun, as... The Hanged Man, and The Hourglass Throne, as well as countless novellas and short stories that you can find. And snippets and snacks. Yeah. and, and, and <laughs> Snippets and, and snackets. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I can't think of another. And, 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 and things off your backs. Yeah, but, you know, uh, he, yeah he's released uh, a bunch of short stories and novellas that you can find um, on his website. Now, all I have to do is just you know Google uh, uh, Katie Edwards, and you'll find it. And you you can find all those short stories there. And those are short stories that take place. Some you know most of them take place in between the novels. Some take place during the novels. And other times he'll release things on Twitter. 
he released a prologue on Twitter that took place years and years and years before the very first novel, which I thought was great. Well, now he's decided to branch off like he hasn't been doing this already. He's branched off. He's going to start writing a companion series. It's a spinoff series to the Terra sequence called Magnus Academy. And this is this is the school that all young Atlanteans, Atlantean scions are required to attend. And this is the first book. And it takes it takes place uh, right early on in uh, during the Hourglass Throne. Right. Because three main characters or what well, I'm going to say main, but three three big secondary characters. They are very big secondary characters in the Terra sequence suddenly are gone. We don't see them anymore until we get towards the latter part of the Hourglass Throne. Why? Well, that's what the Eidolon covers and oh my god God was this good. Yeah, it really was. We got to be beta readers for it. But it's not and I've already got my review out, then we'll have the link for that. But now, honey, it's finally your turn to talk about it. Oh, I thought it was great. We as you said, we got uh it as beta readers and as beta readers, he would he kind of gave us little dribs and drabs of the this or this book. And, um, you know, we get, you know, a couple of chapters and we'd read that and then a couple of chapters and it, it was really compelling and mm-hmm. I enjoyed it tremendously. I enjoyed the, um, without giving anything away, the, the way they all came together and some of the things that, uh, were revealed in this, um, book mm-hmm. <laughs> that I won't say anything about. Yeah, no spoiler. Because the book's not out yet. The book it's comes not out. out it comes out next month. It is just, it's a wild ride from almost the very beginning because it yeah. starts, you know, in the middle of a, you know, a big to do. And um, it just, it's a, I loved it. I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, I'm not going to add anything more to what I, or, or repeat anything that I said in my review. Um, like I said, y- you really do need um, you need to, you need to see the, read the review. Now, I, I, although I am going to cover one other thing, um, Katie has said uh, several times that in order you, you do not need to read the Eidolon in order to enjoy his other books. Uh, you know the other three books. And, you know, obviously that is true for um, The Last Sun and The Hourglass Stone. Um, but I'm going to look at all of his works comprehensively, and I'm going to say, you know... If you don't read The Idol you, on, you're, you're missing something. Well, I, I'm going to say this. You need to, tax, you need to actually look at everything the guy has written. Yeah. Exactly. All of it. All of it. All of it. Uh, and and that's, that's including the stuff that's available on his website for download. It's all free. But if you liked, and if you like a really good urban fantasy that is very queer positive, and holy cow, this these books are very LGBTQ positive in a massive, massively huge way. Yeah. Um, and, and still love a really strong, compelling urban fantasy. You will love the tarot sequence. I mean, th- these these books are absolutely fantastic. But you've got to read the side stories as well. That are available on the website because they just give you little insights. Well, into... it's it's not just little insights, but well, every time, every once in a while, a a real pointed piece of information that you need. That's the big one. He reveals a big piece of he he reveals something that is so important that you now are required to go back and with great glee because that's how I've been feeling. I've been going through for like my fifth reread now or sixth of the earlier works now because every time he reveals something new, uh, especially in these little side stories, it's like I gotta take an I gotta take a look back now <laughs> at the earlier novels because that is gonna change how I saw things back then. Right. So I don't well, okay, he, he feels that you don't need to read these side stories to enjoy the tarot sequence, and maybe he is correct on that. But if I think if you really want to get the maximum amount of enjoyment out of those novels, you have got to read everything 
that he has published, either through a publisher or on his website or even on his Twitter account. And he's put a lot of stuff out there on his Twitter account that yeah. is not available anywhere else. Yeah, and the Eidolon, uh, it, it's being published by Rainbow Crate. Uh, Rainbow Crate. And is Josh doing... Um... It's not announced yet. He has not made the announcement. Um, he just, um, Katie just, I think yesterday, it was either yesterday or early today, I can't, I can't be sure, but within the last 24 hours, made, uh, came out on, um, or said on uh, Twitter that the announcement for a narrator will be soon coming. I think there is a great hope that it's going to be Josh. Yeah. Who has narrated the three big novels so far. Because in my mo in my mind, I don't think there's anybody else who can do this. Yeah. Well, that is it for, and we've, wow, we spent a lot of time. Uh, we spent 36 minutes. So we're going to have to rush through the rest of the show. So right. here we go. This is Michael R. Menenge of Slice of Sci-Fi, Winging It, and Dragon Page. And you are listening to the Two Gay Geeks. God, that was old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here's a few selected birthdays for January 9th through January 15th, 2023. January 9th, Imelda Staunton, English actress and singer. After training at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. Staunton, singer? Yep. I had no idea. Began her career in repertory theater in 1976 and appeared in various theater productions in the United Kingdom. She later gained a wide audience for her portrayal as Dolores Umbridge in the Harry Potter films, The Order of the Phoenix, and The Deathly Hallows Part 1. She continued supporting roles in Nanny McPhee, reunited with Lee in Another Year, and the film continuation of Downton Abbey. She portrayed human rights activist Hafina Hayden in the historical film Pride and starred in the British comedy Finding Your Feet. She also provided voice acting roles for the films Chicken Run, Arthur Christmas, where she was Mrs. Claus, and Paddington. And we have to acknowledge who her husband is. Uh, her husband uh, plays played the head butler in oh. Downton Abbey. Oh, that's right. And I can't remember his name right now off the top of my yeah. head. I'm, I'm rapidly looking yeah. it up. But yeah, um, so there, there's a funny scene in the last Downton Abbey movie where they were mistaken for being a married couple, uh, which I thought was oh, hilarious yes, because yes. they're married in real life. Yes. <laughs> and she portrayed Queen Elizabeth II in the first, uh, the final two seasons of The Crown, gaining a nomination for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. Oh, God, I'm looking at her IMDb. Have... It's insane. Oh, um, Jim Carter <sighs> yes. is his name, the, the husband. Joan Baez, singer, songwriter, musician, and activist. Joan Baez has been active in the music world for over six decades. She emerged as a major music figure in the counterculture era of the 60s. Her music encompasses various genres like pop, folk rock, country, and gospel music. She's involved in civil rights, human rights, and environmental activists as well. I have a lot of friends on January 9th. Jessica Dale, Everett Ingram... Rosemary in Inlow and Jessica Ingham. Happy birthday. January 10th, Sal Minio was uh, an American actor, director, and singer. Best remembered for playing John Crawford in the 1955 drama film Rebel Without a Cause, for which he received an Academy Award nomination, becoming the fifth youngest nominee under the Best Supporting Actor uh, category. He was also a bisexual and had re many relationships with male celebrities, and sadly, he was stabbed to death by a pizza delivery man. Yeah, I'm trying to look into that. Sad. That is just so bizarre. Yeah, it, it, there's not a whole lot there. And then we have Ray Bolger, who was an American actor, dancer, singer, vaudevillian, and stage performer, particularly musical theater. He started out in the silent film era. Bolger was a major Broadway performer in the 30s and beyond. He is best known for his roles in The Wizard of Oz he as the Scarecrow, and in Walt Disney's holiday musical fantasy Babes in Toyland as the villainous Barnaby. A friend of ours, Tim Hampton. January 11th, Alice Paul. From eight, she lived from 1885 to 1977. Alice Paul was an American Quaker, feminist, suffragist, and women's rights activist. 
She is better remember, best remembered for strategizing events like the Silent Sentinels and the Woman Suffrage, Suffrage Procession, which resulted in the passage of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution in 1920. Alice Paul often displayed courage while confronting police brutality for her activism. Then we have Grant Tinker, American television executive who served chairman of, and CEO of NBC from 1981 to 1986. He was also co-founder of MTM Enterprises and a television producer. And this is a kind of a long entry. It's uh, He joined uh, NBC as the head of West Coast Programming. He was re responsible or involved in developing I Spy, Dr. Kildare, The Man from Uncle, and the original Star Trek and Get Smart. Mm -hmm. He married Mary Tyler Moore in 1962, and they, uh, with you know MTM Enterprises, Room 222, Mary Tyler Moore Show, uh, Rhoda, The Bob Newhart Show, WKRP in Cincinnati, Hill Street Blues, and St. Elsewhere. Yeah, a lot of those are not NBC shows either. Yeah. Room 222 was ABC. Yep, and he was no longer with uh, ah, NBC at that time. I got it. And then he also... Uh, network uh, regained ratings and commissioned The Cosby Show, Family Ties, Golden Girls, Cheers, Night Court, and Hill Street Blues. Uh, he had rejoined them, and then um, he left after RCA bought General Electric in 1986. Ah. Friends of ours, Eileen Dietz. Who, who we, is, just saw who we just a saw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and Tanner Chavez. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. January 12th, Jack London was an American novelist, social activist, and journalist, a pioneer of American magazines and commercial fiction. London was one of the first authors from the U.S. to become an international celebrity. His life and work inspired several films, such as the 1943 movie Jack London and 1980 film Klondike Forever. He was also portrayed in several TV series. I and, love that you included and this. According to Star Trek, he met Data, Mark Twain, and the infamous Guinan, which convinced him to become a writer. Actually, well, it was that meeting them, but it was it was Mark Twain who I think who convinced him to write. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't. I looked him up, and there's no mention of him ever meeting Mark Twain. So. Yeah. Well, I'm. I, I hardly call that surprising. Well. Or Data or Guinan, for that matter. In God, his imagine Wikipedia. that. Mm. Rob Zombie, founder, founding member of the popular heavy metal band White Zombie. Rob Zombie and his American singer, songwriter, voice actor, and filmmaker, having incorporated horror and sci-fi films into his music and lyrics for the beginning of his career. Zombie often entertains his audience visually in his live shows. He is credited with popularizing show rock theatricality, He's a vegetarian and an animal rights activist. He, zombie, Rob Zombie is actually a really cool guy. Now, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the music. However, I might have to try and Google you know, or, or search YouTube to see if there are any concert videos out. Because yeah. I'm really curious. I love a good theatrical concert show. I yep. mean, I, I love that kind of thing. So I might have to do that just to see what his shows are like. And also on the 12th, so, uh, friends of ours, Sylvain Durard, who is a... French filmmaker and Mr. Tommy Cannon, who does our Sunday funny page oh. with the Nerdy Chupacabra. Happy birthdays. January 13th, Gwen Verdon, four time winning actor. Gwen Verdon is remembered for a SAG nominated performance in Marvin's Room. She was known for her signature red hair and her love for cats. She was nominated for Emmys from the series Magnum P.I., Dream On, and Homicide Life on the Street. She inspired the series Fosse Verdon and What Lola Wants, Lola Gets. How can you not mention Damn Yankees? Exactly. Yeah, you know, she. The only reason Fosse did that choreography for her is because he knew she could do it. Yep. And what a crazy, crazy. Oh my God. And Amazing What stuff. Lola Wants, What Lola Gets. Is that is unbelievable. Some of the most dynamic choreography. Yep. William B. Davis is a Canadian actor best known for his role as Cigarette Smoking Man, or more commonly known as Cancer Man on The X-Files. Besides appearing in many TV programs and movies, he founded his own acting school, the William Davis Center for Actors Study. In his personal life, he is an avid water skier, lectures on skepticism at events of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiries, CSI Con, and advocates for action on climate change. 2011, he published his memoir, Where There's Smoke, The Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man. 
Incidentally, he's married to Ann B. Davis from Brady Bunch. No, he it's didn't. It's a fact. No, he didn't. <laughs> well, it's William B. and Ann B. Uh, Davis. B. Davis is their yeah. last name. Got it. Yep. Right. Uh-huh. Yep. He's actually, a, a, a I, I, I heard him interviewed. <laughs> um, oh, God. I don't, I don't remember where. I, I mean, it might have been a... One slice of sci-fi episode, for all I know. Um, a terribly nice man. Yeah, because he was on, what was that? Continuum. Continuum, yeah. He was the elder uh, form of his self. Right. Uh, it was, and I think we, we talked to several people from that show. We did. And yeah. he may have been one. And then we have friend of ours, Merrick MacArthur. Happy birthday. January 14th, Carl Weathers began his foot career as a football player playing for the NFL team Oakland Raiders and the CFL team BC Lions. He stepped into acting with Arthur Marks' black exploitation films. He's also known as Apollo Creed from the Rocky films and Greek car- <laughs> Grief Karga yeah. from the Mandalorian. <clears throat> I didn't know he was with the Oakland Raiders for yeah. a time. That's interesting. Lawrence Kasdan, American filmmaker. He is a co-writer of the Star Wars films the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, Solo, A Star Wars Story. He also wrote Waiters of the Lost Ark and uh-huh. The Bodyguard. Okay. He's the I, director I, I was, of Body Heat, Big Chill, Silverado, The okay. Accidental Tourist, and Dreamcatcher. I, I was going to say, I'm mean, really cool with The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Then when you said Force Awakens, I was like, well, I need to slap him now. <laughs> He's known for updating old Hollywood genres, film noir, science fiction westerns in a classical dramatic way with quick-witted dialogue but dealing with contemporary social themes. As a director, he has made various personal films to that examine characters and generations. Quite a few friends that we have on January 14th, Billy Zayak, Anthony Ecclesi, Jack Mangan, who everybody knows yeah, and everybody, everybody knows, knows Jack. Him. Yeah. B.J. Johnston and former classmate Terry Goodpaster Hayes. You know, I've heard of you don't know Jack, but everybody knows Jack. Wow. Exactly. January 15th, Martin Luther King Jr., a leader in the civil rights movement. In the 20th century, Martin Luther King Jr. is best remembered for advancing civil rights through nonviolence and civil disobedience. A man of Christian faith who was inspired by the Indian freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolent activism. He was honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for fighting racial inequality. And um, his birthday is uh, on the 15th, uh, the day before the Martin Luther King holiday. Martin Luther King Day holiday. Imagine that. Maria Schell was an Austrian act, Swiss actress. She was one of the leading stars of German cinema in the 50s and 60s in 1954. She was awarded the Cannes Best Actress film for her performance in Helmut Kautner's war drama The Last Bridge. And in 1956, she won the Volpe Cup for Best Actress at the Venice Film Festival for Gervais. She was the older sister of Maximilian Schell. I only recently learned that fact, too, that she was the older sister. I, I, I thought, well, duh. And not related to Catherine Schell. In not the, related to Catherine Schell. Uh, too bad. We could have put that in there. But we can say that. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah, exactly. If you follow it with the tra- phrase, it's a fact. You can say anything you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It'll cost you $68 an hour on a Thanksgiving yeah. day. It's a fact. <laughs> And that's it for the birthdays this time. Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the Cool Squad? Not me, that's for sure. How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool.
Go give a listen to our friends Chuck and Craig over at Tech Drama Podcast. I'm Daniel Radcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. It's free and confidential, and trained counselors are there to listen 24-7 without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life-saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. Okay, it's time for the feedback. I got to race to this because my voice is dying. Uh, these are comments that we received in response to articles and episodes that we read on our website at teachgeeks.com. And the links for each of these will be in the show notes for this episode number 412 at tggeeks.com. Starting with, regarding Ben's holiday breakdown, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. We got this comment on Twitter, and it's from Sue HP Bidzy Cheddar Mini Booger. Now, I believe those are her pets. Yes, the, uh, those are their cats, and I think they have a dog. That's Sue Hodge Parker that they moved up oh, to Prescott. Yeah. Oh, that's Sue Hodge Parker? Yep. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> anyway, she's anyway, Sue says, Betsy had pulled up a more traditional holiday mover, mover, movie over the weekend, but somehow her dad slipped this instead. We really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, good for you, Dad. Moving on, regarding TG Geeks episode number 407, we got a comment from Anime Who Review Channel on YouTube. This is my friend Darren Anderson in the UK, and I, I just love Darren to death. And he said, made a mistake. Walt died the 15th of December, 1966. I need to listen to 407 again to hear what it is that we said. I because I don't remember, but I'll take your word for it, Darren. And you're right; he did die on the on, on December fifteenth. Also, we got a comment from Winter Horror Fest. They left this on our Instagram account. Our interview with the two gay geeks is live. Go check it out now through the info on their page. We're extremely grateful to them for their support in this event and our charities. Go give this a listen. Ben and Keith are the amazing humans behind the two gay geeks supporting and sponsoring Winter Horror Fest. Hey. And it was a joy to do so. It was. And, and we, it, it uh, benefited uh, Mulligan's Manor. Absolutely. And we close off regarding TG Geek Steps number 408. And we gave a shout out to, uh, to our good friend Arkel on that one. And I guess, he, we, I guess we said like he wasn't doing too well health wise. And, and Arkel commented saying, <laughs> Thanks for the well wishes. <laughs> Though I do find it mildly funny that the way Keith phrased it made me sound worse off than I actually am. It's certainly not a vacation dealing with COVID right now, but I'm not exactly knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door over here. Laugh out loud. Well, I, I didn't want to share that you had COVID if you didn't want people to know that. Fair so enough. That's why I it sounded I was struggling for words <laughs> and that's the way it came out. Yes, no, Ryan is no. over there dying. Yeah, our, yeah, we're not going to mention you have COVID. We're just going to simply say you have the plague. Exactly. <laughs> Don't go near him. They have fleas. <laughs> if you want to leave a comment, you can do that on our Facebook page, Twitter, or Instagram. You can leave a comment on our YouTube episodes as well as anything on tggeeks.com. We'll give you a shout out on a future episode. We also have a listener feedback line and we... If you leave us a voicemail, we will play that on air. You can call 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. And as always, please play nice. For more than two decades, Judy and Dennis Shepard have honored their son, Matt, by working to erase hate around the world. The Matthew Shepard Foundation honors his legacy by inspiring the good work of activists, teachers, artists, and legislators, and everyday LGBTQ plus folks and their allies. Join us today in helping to erase hate. Visit MatthewShepard.org. Thank you to NBC Comcast Universal for that promo. I'll just say that we are huge supporters of independent creators. Please support them by taking a look at wherever you can find them. Buy their stuff, chat them up. Support independent creators. If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, 
or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877-565-8860. In Canada, it is 877-330-6366. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? Just uh, a real quick. Um, we we saw have saw we have saw on. Saw yes, on. we have seen. <laughs> That's a new word. Okay. <laughs> My voice and my brain are faltering at the moment. We have seen two trailers this week, one for Foundation, and it's like... Wow, could that be more... What? It, 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 what? You, you cannot get What does that vague. tell me? It tells me nothing. It, it just tells me that, it, that, you know... Lee Pace is naked a lot. <laughs> exactly. That's all it tells me. Now, the Renfield trailer... Holy moly. Was, oh, my God. What a mess. But it I looks can't wonderful. Wait. That and that there's your there's your Nick Cage coming in to save the day. Exactly. It was like, what am I watching? It's it's part superhero movie too. I mean, Renfield is awesome in this. Was it is Nicholas Holt? Is that the guy who's yeah, doing it? Nicholas Holt. Yeah. Oh God, he, he's going to be really good in this. It's, I can't wait for that one. I can't wait for Foundation, but the trailer was what is it? Oh, I know. It didn't it, tell it me looks anything. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, but Renfield trailer. So <laughs> can't wait for those two. And it's time for our weekly review. These are items that we ran on our website this past week at tggeeks.com, and the links for each of these will be in the show notes for this episode number 412 at tggeeks.com, starting with Sunday, January 1st. New Year's Day for a nerdy chupacabra is number 133. On Monday the 2nd, TG Geeks episode number 411. On Tuesday the 3rd, Arkle's 2022 movie and TV breakdown by category. On Wednesday the 4th, Andrea's Angle, Living exquisite performances full of life on thursday the 5th andrea's angle megan and megan is spelled m the number three letters g-a-n killer robot creepy nothing new on friday the 6th hamish downey's playlist for january 2023 and ben's book breakdown the eidolon is a thrilling debut to magnus academy and we close off the week saturday the 7th this Got Made, hosted by Carlton Tetley, Season 4, Episode oh 8, God. Poison Number 1. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> I watched it this morning. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> and this is different how. We have some shout-outs we need to make. First to our good friend Arkel. You heard from him earlier. He's on Twitter as Geek of All Trades. Geek is spelled the letter G, the number three, the number three, the letter K of all trades. He's also known as Brian, the ampersand list YouTuber. Go to there because you're going to find uh, his Arkel Times Post Dispatch News. And while you're looking for all things Arkel, go to his YouTube channel, Arkel Studios, uh, YouTube.com slash Arkel Studios. There. Thank you very much. He also did a challenge, uh, a list challenge of all the movies he watched for the first time in 2022. And you can see the link. We must also have some shout-outs that we need to make. First two Gay Geeks After Hours for saying we can share away our content there. Their address is facebook.com slash group slash Gay Geeks After Hours. And then to The Gay Geek for the same thing. And theirs is facebook.com slash group slash The Gay Geek. And as always, we give special thanks to their moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. Thanks, Jeremiah. Other places we can be found, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts, as well as whether other, other fine podcasts can be found. Also, check us out on Sci-Fi Radio at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesdays and listen to their other content. They're a 24-hour geeky internet radio station. Please rate us and view us on iTunes, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
And that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page of things we talked about. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page, our website, tggeeks.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357 from TG Squared Studios. I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. We encourage you to live and be your authentic self, and you may find the happiness that you deserve. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. Peace. Cheers. Cheers.